Welcome to my second hater's guide to the Overwatch League. Stage 3 has come to a close. Brigitte is coming, Reinhardts are flying, and 8 teams still have a realistic chance at the season playoffs. In ascending order based on Stage 3 performance, let's see how every team is looking heading into the final stretch. Attackers incoming. Is anyone really surprised at this point? I mean, sure, we were all hoping, but is anyone surprised? 30 games played, 17 maps won, 0 wins. Fans of this team will point to Gaguri, Otto, Fearless, Dia as signs that this team is on the rise, and they are, but how much further could they have actually fallen? Yeah, sure, they've turned the 4 0s of the past into 3 1s, but the sad truth is that most of the other teams are still simply brushing them aside, and at this point, there's nothing they can do about it except keep practicing and continuing to get their synergy up. I just hope they can keep improving, and hopefully, hopefully, they'll be able to net a win or two in Stage 4. I really hope so. Defeat. Ah, Dallas. The drama train will never stop for you. Let's see what happened to you this stage. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you kicked out Rascal and Kai Kai, and Effect fucked off to Korea. Huh, that actually wasn't as long as I thought it'd be. Well, on the bright side, near the end of the stage, we got to see Dallas try several unconventional strategies. Taimu, Seagull, and Coco have all come off the bench. It's too bad they were on the bench for a reason. Other than maybe Seagull, these guys just aren't up to the Overwatch League level right now, and it's so disappointing knowing their past. I do hope we get to see Dallas running all kinds of things in the future, though. At this point, I would pretty much just be holding tryouts for Season 2. Ten. Say a player is great. Everyone else is not. It's always so frustrating to watch Say a player pull hero plays out of his ass, and the Mayhem will somehow lose the map anyways. Florida, for some reason, has decided to bench Logic for most of Stage 3. I guess Tavik has a bigger hero pool, but... Tracer Widow was the comp that reigned supreme in Stage 3, and there's so many maps where you could get away with just running Tracer Widow or Tracer McCree. In other news, Awesome Guy should change his name to Decent Guy because his Winston play has been meh, and the team should have gotten some fucking supports. Nine. Last stage, I said the main problem with this team was their lack of a Tracer, but now it seems like their problem is everywhere. Literally none of these guys are living up to their expectations except for their tank line. Jake's Tracer has improved, but he's still outclassed by almost every other Tracer in the league. Linkster's Widowmaker looks much more mortal and has even been outclassed a lot by a bunch of different Widows in this league. Rockus is caught out of position all the time as Zen, and it doesn't matter who plays main support whether it's Bonnie or Boink, they both underperform and get killed while trying to res someone out in the open. People say the Stage 4 meta will benefit them, and I agree, but I'm not sure if it'll be to the degree that fans want to think. Houston fans, pray I'm wrong. You'll need me to be if you want to make the season playoffs. Eight. Um, are you guys okay? It felt like this team was never quite the same after the XL reverse swept them for the second time. Carpe has gotten quiet, Fraggy is overextending, Boombox is constantly getting caught out in focus. We saw in Stage 2 that this team can be great. But apparently this team is also streaky. The Fusion seem to have lost a lot of confidence over Stage 3, and it is shown in their gameplay. This team might need to try something new. Free Shadowburn? Seven. Who would have thought moving fucking Jaehong to main tank would be the best thing to possibly happen to these guys? The way I saw Soul through week 4 of Stage 3, they never really had a game plan. It looked like there were 6 people in comp and none of them were in voice chat. It seemed like they wanted to work together, but Miro wanted to dive in while Zumba stayed in the middle and Flutter was left on his own to get picked off. But in week 5, it became clear just how much Jae Hong's leadership could shape this team going forward. For once, it looks like the Dynasty had a purpose, a style. And that could be really scary. Six. London had a really weird stage. Birdring apparently hurt his wrist, so he was gone after week 1. In his place was Hooray. Even though he began to hit his stride near the end of the stage, he mostly looked like a worse version of Burgring. On one hand, all of their losses went to 5 maps. On the other, they had to play Oasis, by far their worst map every time. Their final record on the map is 2 and 5. Ew. On the other hand, they pulled off a 3 game winning streak to end the game at 5 and 5, so... 
okay. I have full confidence that this team will make the playoffs at the end of it all, but how good will they do when they get there? Five. This was it for the Shock. All the pieces are here. Sinatra and Super are 18. Architect and Moth are in town. The Shock finally have the team they want, and in week 5 we really saw this team send a message. Never overlook them. Moth and Super have done wonders to improve this team's comms and coordination. Sinatra's aggro tracer style has given teams nightmares. Architect has been amazing on Genji, Farah, and McCree, and he's also had his moments on Widow. Watching him dominate Carpe on Route 66 was all the Shock fans needed. Not to mention Dante showing new flexibility, Nevix breaking out, Sleepy continuing to quietly be the best American Zenyatta. The Shock are all but mathematically eliminated from the overall playoffs, but after two 3-7 and seven stages, there sure is a lot for fans to get excited about for Season 2. Four. The biggest story for the Gladiators this stage was the transformation of Surefor into a Widow God. Other than that, it was business as usual. They bought Silk Thread, put him in a little, he showed some potential, and then never played him again after week 2. And it makes you wonder what he's grinding. I think Asher and Shaz are the most underrated Tracer and Zenyatta in the league respectively. Bishu has really been stepping up his D.Va play recently, and while Fissure has faded a little bit due to other storylines, he's been great as always. They've managed to achieve their first stage playoff appearance, and they still have some ground to make up to make the season playoffs, but I think they're ready for it. Three. How the hell did that work? I thought after a lackluster stage 2, the Valiant were just blowing everything up. And they did, but they put it all back together really easily and really quickly. Custa has been surprisingly solid in gameplay as well as providing incredible shot calling. Space came in and immediately established himself as one of the best divas in the league. Bunny has come in and he's been harassing backlines all stage. Soon has been able to switch over to Widowmaker and he's been solid. And all of this has turned into a blazing hot 5-0 start. And then 2-3 and three in their second half. But after their stage 2, I think the management has done an incredible job of putting this team back in a good place. Don't make me wrong a second time, you fucking bitch. 10-0. Need I say more? The Uprising are the underdog story of a lifetime. And even though they came up short in the finals, Boston fans should be ecstatic with the results this stage. And the business model for this team has been consistency. Mistakes came into the roster, and it turns out he can do just about anything Dreamcasper could do, except play Farah, but that isn't a huge deal. Stryker has established himself as an MVP candidate at this stage. Other than that, this team is just loaded with players that get along well and do the job at an extremely high level. Man, I have gushed about this team a lot recently, and they deserve it. And again, 10 and 0. But... Even that wasn't enough to beat. One. Pine is back, baby. Man, I did not realize how much I missed this guy. How many times in this stage did we watch Pine just completely dismantle a team, hitting three or four perfect headshots in a row, pulling out three 60s in a pro match? This guy just brings an energy and a swagger to this team that Libero couldn't possibly match, even though he's still really freaking good. The Excelsior literally don't have a weakness to exploit. Mono, Mecho, Jonak, Ark, Anamo, Sabiolbi, everyone on this team is insane. And thus far, they've always been able to pull out the clutch plays when they have needed to, like in the finals. In Stage 2, I called this team the team to beat. And now that Stage 3 has ended, I don't think anyone would disagree with me. Here are my predictions for Stage 4. The Excelsior and the Uprising are the top two teams in the league right now. They'll take number 1 and 2, respectively. London should have Birdring back this stage, which will get them back on track and bring them to number 3. The Shock showed massive improvements in Stage 3, and if they can continue to improve like that, I think they can beat anyone below them, so they'll take the 4th and final playoff spot. Below them, I have the Gladiators, the Dynasty, and the Outlaws just missing out. The Valiant, on the other hand, have shown many cracks in their armor by the end of the stage, and I'm afraid most teams will figure out how to exploit them. I love the fusion in their style, but with their uncooperative gameplay as of recently, I just don't trust them right now, so they'll take 9th. The Mayhem, Fuel, and Dragons will take their spots at 10, 11, and 12 respectively, though I really hope the Dragons prove me wrong. Though, 
What's amazing about this league is that I could legitimately see numbers 2 through 9 going in any order. That is how close these teams are. That's it for me, guys. Till next time, don't play Ryan. Peace. <laughs>